Excellent. Thank you, Callum, for that, those, those kind words, the fabulous introduction. So, hello, thank you for coming, thank you for bearing with the, uh, the interesting beginning to these things. My name is Philip, uh, Philip Hellyer, and uh, I am, for the purposes of tonight, wearing two completely separate hats. One is as the Director of Clarity and Transformation for Broadlight, and Broadlight Global, as you may or may not know, we do DevOps, we do cloud, we help you figure out what you really ought to be doing with some of that technology, how to marry it into security, and how to do things that just, that just work for the organizations that you're trying to be. Now I'll take that hat off slightly and put on my other hat, uh, where is a startup that I advise called Beeminder. And for them, I'm their chief philosophy officer. And so, as you might imagine, this talk will get a little bit strange. Uh, in fact, it's almost as though we're on a carousel. And it's the first time I've done this talk, so I will be leaning over, looking at my notes, and wondering what's going on. Um, so let me, since we're in philosophy land, let me start with a picture of this man here. So this is Daniel Kahneman. Has anybody read this book? Excellent. Um, I've read most of it. Um, so, so Daniel Kahneman, for those who don't know, he and a, and a man named Amos Tversky did an awful lot of research into psychological behavior and the quirks and foibles that people have and the biases that we bring to ourselves in our everyday lives. But one of the most interesting things that they found as they went along is that knowing about human biases does not free you from them. You can help design systems that avoid some of the impact of them, but particularly some of the things that impact yourself, you will be blissfully unaware of. And that becomes particularly relevant because I'm talking tonight about motivation hacking. And this is, this is trying to get more out of ourselves, to be more productive, to do more of the things that we think we want to do, uh, and to not end up you know, miserable and old and full of regret. Because uh, it would be bad. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Jeff's on last. Uh, for those of you <laughs> who want to leave early, um, it's, uh, it's perfect. Um, but it's almost as though we've got all these different competing people inside of us. And sometimes we are absolutely brilliant. We can invent time machines and spacecrafts and all sorts of things. And that same person who is still us can in other contexts be completely incompetent. Uh, some of you will be familiar with David Allen's getting things done methodology. Uh, and one of the things he, he said in his consultancy career is that it's amazing how many people are highly, highly competent at work and they never give themselves permission to be competent in the same ways at home. Uh, and that leads, in a way, to some of the work I often do on the side, is mentoring and coaching and working with individuals, because there's usually some part of their life in which the thing they're wrestling with, actually they're really, really good at it, and it's about identifying that and then trying to move that context of competency to somewhere that they, they really want it to be. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Sorry. As I said, first time looking at the notes. <laughs> this particular episode of Rick and Morty, uh, I think they went to an alternate dimension in which uh, Rick was a moron uh, and Morty was the smart one. Uh, and that didn't go very well at either. But uh, nonetheless, we've got all those people inside of us all of the time. But we don't always see them because when we think about what we want to achieve in our lives and our careers and all these things, we imagine this idealized future where everything is absolutely fantastic. We are highly competent, you're standing on stage, the audience is in stitches, you know, rounds of applause, all sorts of things. And you go, okay, I will, I will prepare. I, I signed up. Jade asked me, what, three months ago if I would do this talk? Obviously, I will prepare in advance. I will know my material. I will pick the best, best slides. Uh, or I will finish them before <laughs> uh, this talk while drinking beer. Uh, and you come to the, the place and you discover, well, um, this remains to be seen. But, you know, the, those good intentions of preparing in advance and picking the best material and practicing it in front of friends uh, and all those things, the hours pass and you don't do it. And the days pass and the weeks pass and the months pass. And suddenly you're standing in front of a crowd of mostly complete strangers, but not completely. Hello. <laughs> um, giving a talk. And you go, hmm, how did this happen? And this brings us all the way back to philosophy. Because the magic word for this is acrasia. And acrasia is this thing. It is the state of acting against your better judgment. 
When you are aerocratic, you eat the cake, you don't go to the gym, you sit on the couch, you sleep in late, you go, I'll do it tomorrow, except you never quite do it tomorrow, and you end up like that. Uh, so that's no good. So let's say, for instance, we, ha we have an ambition in life. We want to have interesting conversations with interesting people in whatever language they speak. Uh, so we go, OK, we're going to go learn a language. Um, I pulled this off the internet. It's got the most spoken languages in the world. It doesn't list French, which uh, is mildly annoying because I've been learning French and um, it's not so good. But also I suspect that this is a list of the languages by population, not necessarily languages of populations that you're likely to encounter. Uh, whereas the French people get everywhere. Uh, but they have put an Eiffel Tower, so all is good. So nonetheless, we know from the nice chap that we saw on the screen earlier that we're going to start with this great ambition about learning a language and studying every day and becoming fluent and meeting lots of great people and having friends. But we're then never, ever, ever going to do it. So we are, you know, above average, smart, intelligent, good-looking people. So we go on the internet, we look up for language learning tools, things that are going to help us do better in learning language. And we come across things like Duolingo, which tries to add gamification to language learning and gives you little patterns and, pay and quizzes and streaks. You can go, oh, I studied for eight days in a row. I'm great. <laughs> and then on day nine, well, there's something on television and you're just, you know, Netflix instead. Uh, and if you're a little bit more advanced, you start using things like Closeminder. Uh, sorry, Close Master. <laughs> Close Minder is ours. Uh, Close Master, which gives you sentences in a language and omits certain words that you then fill in the blanks yourself. And it does it with you typing, it does it with you speaking, it does all sorts of really cool things. Uh, and both of these integrate to Beaminder, which you will see uh, in a moment. Uh, they've got gamification built in. They are interesting and fun, but they may not be enough because one day you wake up and there's something else on television and you forget to open the app and you've gotten the habit of ignoring the reminders that it gives you because, well, you get so many of them, and so you don't do anything. Um, which brings us to this man. <laughs> this is Jerry Seinfeld. He's a very funny man. Uh, if He would have prepared <laughs> before coming and standing up here. Uh, but he's got a particular method of preparing and of not uh, letting something fall away that he decided that he wanted to do. He uses his calendar. He gets himself a calendar, and every day that he does the thing, he marks with a big X. And the next day, he does the thing. For him, it's probably writing or practicing his jokes. But nonetheless, he marks it with an X. And over time, he gets an entire calendar filled with Xs. And this is brilliant uh, until the day that you don't do the thing. Because <laughs> maybe you've gone along, and you, you have, uh, you've done the thing you were supposed to do, and you've collected you know, 30 X's in a row, or 50 X's in a row, or 100. And then one day, you forget. Your, 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 all the motivation power you had from that chain of, of X's is gone. And Callum still says I'm being quiet. It's because we're not hooked into the speakers, Callum. Projection. Projection. Right. We can try that. Um, which brings us to another man. <laughs> um, does anybody know who he is? Odysseus. Ah, it would be an American in the room. Excellent. Odysseus. Um, I'm Canadian. I can say this. You're, you're like a fellow North American. <laughs> Um, so Odysseus uh, figured this out in a way. He's, he's the motivation hacker in the original sense of things. Uh, he just had heard the legend of the sirens and that they uh, were brilliant people to, to, to talk to uh, and they, uh, they had beautiful songs. Uh, the only downside was that anybody who listened to their songs ended up drowning because they spent all the time listening and none of their time sailing and things went horribly wrong from there. So he went... Aha! I have a brilliant idea. What I will do is I will get my men to tie me to the mast so that the beautiful women can come and sing at me and as much as I want to go uh, you know, swim and spend time with them and drown myself, I won't because I am you know, otherwise occupied. Uh, and I will make sure that my loyal crew uh, don't have this same uh, temptation because I will stuff their ears with wax, they will hear nothing, it will be great. And it worked. But imagine if Odysseus decided that he really, really liked this experience and he wanted to do it again next week. 
And he does it again and again and again. At some point, that chain of successful, brilliant experiences that he's had, one of his men will be jealous and not quite stop up their ears. Uh, somebody won't quite tie him the, to the mast. And all it has to do is go wrong once, and it will go very, very wrong. And all his motivation that he had will be out the window, mostly because he'd be drowned and dead. So he needs something smarter. Uh, since since Beaminder Be helps people stick to their goals, uh, goals in the traditional sense uh, adhere to, to smart, yes? They, we'll find out what the, what the letters mean because I've forgotten for the moment. Uh, but Beaminder helps people stick to their goals, to the important ones ideally. And we do this by making things very, very visible. You say, I'm over here, I want to get here. We make this nice yellow brick road. And you enter your data points as you go along, uh, and magically, bit by bit, your goal happens. Because if you're not making progress towards that goal every day, you're probably not making progress towards your goal and going backwards, uh, as a very wise audience member said. So, smarter. The S, obviously, is specific and measurable. And you get that by specifying what you're going to measure, how you're going to count it, when you're going to enter data points, where that data is going to come from. Uh, so that's kind of built into the tool. The, the A and the R is that it's achievable and that it's realistic. Uh, and with Beaminder, we have this notion of what we call want, can, will. Uh, and it's something that you want to do that you're perfectly capable of doing. You can go study a language or, or practice some code or go for a run. You can do all sorts of things. Uh, but you won't. So it's this want, can't, can, will. It's, it's often the will part that nobody manages to do uh, because they never quite make time for it in the week, in the day that they've got. Um, and, of course, the, the, the time-bound thing. Um, in Beaminder, you can use it for, for goals that have got a particular date, like coming to give a talk. Uh, did I use it? No, I did not. Um, you can use it for endlessly striving type goals where you just want to, to get better and better over time. But what makes Beaminder smarter uh, is that that commitment that you make is only as long as it is. You can change your mind at any time within the bounds of what we call the equation horizon. Stick with the thing that you said you were going to do for a week. Uh, change it after that. Make the slope shallower or steeper or stop the goal altogether. Uh, all of that is fine. Uh, because we really encourage people to reevaluate whether this particular instantiation of a goal is helping them meet their real world goal, whatever that happens to be, on a regular basis because uh, things change. And particularly, very, very smart people start tying themselves into knots, trying to design the perfect system at the outset. And then, as soon as they start behaving in the world and experiencing it, they discover that the theory that they thought was going to work for them uh, mostly didn't. Or it worked for them for a while, and then it stopped working. And at Beaminder, uh, we, we try and combat that by getting you to, to regularly uh, reevaluate your goals. Um, Beaminder, this is the home page as it was. That's our CTO, Bethany. Um, you can track all sorts of things. Um, in order to, to stop yourself from effectively unplugging your ears and wax and, and drowning, uh, we integrate to a whole bunch of things which will feed data directly into your goals rather than you having to remember to go and enter it every day. Uh, and two of those things at the top there are IFTTT and Zapier, and both of those in turn connect to hundreds of other services so you can hack a lot of things together. Uh, and there's an API so you can send data uh, from pretty much anything, which is how most of my data goes in. Um, this beer, for instance, I have a script. The units in here will go on my units graph. <laughs> is that so you can track to do more? Yeah. It's a definitely a do more goal, yes. Um, it's interesting because um, there are thousands of people using this, and there will be people who are tracking exactly the same measurement, and some of them will be trying to do more, and some will be trying to do less on exactly the same thing. Um, no, mine is, so mine is less. Units, the more units, more success. Is that what you're saying? Definitely. Um, 
that does seem to be correlated in my life, yes. So if I take that to an extreme, yes. It's, it's worth experimenting with for a time, yes. Um, anyway, moving on. How does Beamminder work? Uh, we encourage you to set a smarter goal. We've got a brilliant community of people on, on a forum. Uh, we've got brilliant support, which is what surprises an awful lot of people is that if every time you fail to keep your, your data points above the, the line, uh, we send you a nice email. And if you reply to that nice email saying, whoops, uh, sorry, Netflix is on, uh, it's not my fault, <laughs> um, a, an actual human will read that and respond that to you. Um, and, and there's an enormous amount of power in knowing that there is a human being at the other end of this commitment of yours. Whether it's because you, you've shouted at the rooftops and all your friends know that you're committed to doing this thing, uh, whether it's because it's us. There was a guy on the internet, uh, one of the, Manish Sethi, I think, who paid somebody to sit and slap him. Every time he opened Facebook during the day, his assistant, her job, was to slap him. Uh, and so he very quickly learned that, one, it might have been an unwise use of money, and two, <laughs> not to open Facebook. Um, this is a little bit extreme. So we don't do that. Uh, you don't have to interact with people if you don't want. You set a smarter goal. You set it up in Beaminder. Ideally, you would attach it to an automated data source. You stay above the line every day so that you've not just got a long commitment that you ask at the end, did I do it, and you feel depressed because you didn't. You've got a target that says every day I will make some progress towards my goal, or every week I will make some progress. It's a continuous graph. And how Beaminder works, of course, is that if you fail to do this, we take your money. <laughs> uh, it's a commitment contract. It starts out at $0. Uh, so if you do the thing that you said you were going to do, you don't have to pay us. It's when you don't do the thing that you said you were going to do uh, that we encourage you to hand over some cash. <laughs> Um, which, which you can cap. Uh, and we, ha we have found, in the most self-serving sen sentence I can possibly utter, we have found that the more people pay us, the more success that they have. Because they have figured out what goals they want to achieve in life. They have figured out how to attach it to something that is trackable, that they care about, because they like their money. But it's enough that by the time that they pay us the money, they have got so much value from doing the thing that they said they were going to do. People credit us with getting first class degrees because they have read and done the research and actually written their dissertation ahead of time instead of leaving it to the last minute and getting a, a, a C or whatever the equivalent in this country is, a third. Um, we have people who've done marathons, we've had freelancers who, you know, they write their articles, they submit them, they get paid. You know, it's intrinsically part of what is really important to them. Um, Convincing people of this fact is sometimes a challenge because, well, um, uh, well, uh, blah, blah, blah. I think that's... It does happen. Um, we, fu uh, we don't. This, this is the magic of it, is that it's one of those, you're only cheating yourself, young man, kind of moments. <laughs> it, I, I think of it like setting an alarm clock in the morning. If you pay attention to it, then it works. If you start hitting snooze, it works less and less well. But there are people who get through life, they go, oh, I just hit snooze five times and then I get up. <laughs> but they've had a really bad sleep for about an hour when they could have had a really good sleep and just got up uh, when they were going to get up anyway. The other thing that is super interesting about Beaminder is that we use it on ourselves. So we publish blog posts regularly, which is one of the signs that a startup is still alive. We committed to doing a user visible improvement to Beaminder every single day. Uh, and if we don't, uh, we pay money. So we pay $1,000 to the, to the user who sticks their hand up and says, Oi, you missed. Uh, and in fact, we, we had a brilliant sequence uh, two years ago, I think, or 2,000 days ago, give or take, because we are now on this today is day 3,276 since we started that, that uh, procedure. But on day 1016, I can tell you that we failed. We did the improvement, but we failed to tweet it, which was our, our official bright line of we have done this thing. Um, and Henrik, Henrik from Germany, stuck his hand up and said, Oi, you guys have not done your improvement. Um, and we looked and we felt sheepish. 
and we paid him a thousand dollars, which he then donated to charity, which was awfully nice of him. Uh, that matched, uh, it was a bicycle charity that then matched it. So, if you then think of this from a PR perspective, we wrote a blog post that said, yay, 1,000 days. And then we wrote a blog post that went, oh, <laughs> day 1,016. But Henrik, yay. And Henrik wrote a blog post, and the charity wrote a blog post. Uh, and we just carried on. Um, so absolutely, if, you, if you're building a business, you don't necessarily need to have you use us, but I would say you need something, because it's a long, hard slog, and you need to figure out the things that are going to make you successful over the long haul, whether it's you as an individual, doing posts and social media and profile and networking. Uh, we do have a bunch of people who use it to make sure that they actually leave the house and talk to people. Um, uh, but you do all of that, and you end up in a really great place. <laughs>